Howdy, this is Jeff. I've made some improvements to procedural lightning for Unity. One of which is to be able to make a path of lightning. I'm going to demonstrate how to do that right now. In this demo folder, there's a prefab folder, and inside of that is a metal crate object. I'm going to go ahead and drag that on my scene. Now you'll notice a bunch of things happened when I did that. I got all these lines and lightning bolts appearing that show you the path that your lightning is going to follow. So if I run this, you'll notice that I've got lightning following the path. As you rotate, you can see all of the points. That's very, very cool. So, here's how this works. If you expand the metal crate object, you'll notice that there's two child objects. We've got lightning bolt path prefab, and this guy is responsible for actually making the lightning, and I'll discuss him in just a second. And then we have the metal crate object, which is the actual 3D model for the crate. And underneath that, I have each game object that represents a point that the lightning will follow. In the scene view, you can click on these lightning bolts to see which game object they represent. These can be either empty game objects that you create or your own game objects that you would want lightning to follow. So, let's move on to the lightning bolt path prefab object. This contains a lot of properties that you're familiar with. Uh, it's a combination of the lightning bolt script, which contains the materials for the lightning, the rendering mode, the tint and glow color for the lightning are new so let's just go over those real fast if you want to change the glow color you can just simply do that and during playtime you can test all the glow colors you want to do so that's very cool and the same thing with the lightning if you want red lightning you can do that it's very easy it can be done without changing materials the procedural lightning is smart enough to handle the materials for you behind the scenes okay so all the rest of these parameters you should be familiar with by using the demo script uh, scene so this demo scene configure script is kind of the first scene I ever did with this asset and it uses all of these properties to change the appearance of the lightning However, there are some new ones here. One is that we have a fade percent, so this kind of changes how the lightning fades in and out. So if I increase the duration of the lightning, you'll see how it fades in and out. See how it's fading in and out there? Pretty cool. <clears throat> okay, so the next one that I have is the speed. So in here, over by my mouse cursor, we have the speed property, and that's going to determine how fast the lightning follows the path. A 1 means really fast, and as you lower this, you'll see that the lightning starts to slow down, and you can sort of start seeing it actually travel the path, which is pretty cool. So it's kind of like the flash running, where you just see this sort of a blur moving all over the place. We've got speed interval range here. This can add some randomness to your lightning. So for example, if you wanted to have a chance for it to be really fast or slow, you could make this max higher. And now you've got sort of a random appearance where sometimes it'll stay for just a second and move on. If you make that higher, the effect will be even more drastic where it's staying or jumping pretty random. So if these are your parameters to play with. Uh, have fun with that. Lots of fun. Okay, so the repeat here means do you want this to go in a continual loop? So right now it is. If I turn that off, the loop stops after a single loop. You can turn that parameter back on to get the loop again. Okay, great. So let's look at how we built this path. I've got seven game objects right here. And inside of here I've got my lightning path. So this is a reorderable list. You can move the points around if you want to move, change how the lightning moves. As you're playing, you can even move the game objects around to see what it does to your lightning. So for example, if I move this guy out here, the lightning will go over there. I think it's behind the 
crate right now so it'll be tough to see it but yeah there we go so you can see that as you move this game object it moves everything okay let's undo all of that let's move a point that you can actually see in the play view there we go so as you move the game object the lightning changes position which is great that should help you to very rapidly create paths of electricity for machinery or anything else you can think of okay let's go back to this path uh, let's say I want to loop my lightning from start to finish you'll notice that element 0 has point 1 and the very last element 7 goes back to point 1 so my lightning completes an entire circuit now you can put the same point in here over and over again if you want the lightning to travel through a point like say you wanted to do a star or some sort of shape where you needed to reuse the same point the lightning is certainly welcome to travel through the same point multiple times that's not a problem if you don't want your lightning to loop you can just delete off this last point here by clicking the minus well, now you'll notice that the lightning is not completing a full circuit anymore you can see this point six which is the last point now it doesn't travel back to this red icon which denotes the start of the group there so I'm gonna undo that and now the lightning is completing the full circuit again okay that's how you do lightning paths uh, before I go, there's just some caveats here. The root object that you're using should have a position and rotation and scale of defaults, which means no position values, no rotation values, and a scale of 1. The script object that's underneath here, the lightning bolt path prefab, should also have the exact same position, rotation, and scale values. They should all be their defaults the object that you want to move around that the lightning path is attached to that can have position rotation and scale values no problem not a big deal if you want to do that you can move that object around and it works just fine you just need to be sure not to change the position rotation or scale values of the root game object or of the lightning bolt path script object otherwise the lightning will not show up at the right points Okay, so once you've created, once you've made your prefab, you can add empty game objects and create your path and then drag them onto your script. Or you can use existing game objects from your scene if you have, say, monsters or something else that you want to attach lightning to, like for a chain lightning effect, you could build up this lightning path manually in script. That works fine too. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please email me at jjxtra at gmail.com if you have any questions. Thank you.